Purse median house price rose to a new high of $560,000 in July. Now this was 0.9% higher than June and almost 5% higher than a year ago with the previous peak of $545,000 being set in 2014. Now Rewa CEO Kath Hart said the median house price has been rising steadily all year and while massive price hikes make great headlines, moderate increases are better for the market. This allows sellers to achieve capital growth over time while ensuring home ownership remains relatively affordable and attainable. Now, while the Perth median house price has reached a new high of $560,000, 99 suburbs have median house prices below this. So there are definitely affordable options for buyers. While the median house price rose, the median unit price fell 0.4% to $398,000 in July. Now, this was 2.9% lower than a year ago. Now, many other market metrics remain stable throughout July, including the median rent price and time to sell and lease. So let's talk some Perth property values. Now, CoreLogic's Perth home value index increased 1% in July and 3.2% over the past three months. According to Reba.com, top performing suburbs for house price growth in July were one and up, up 2.4% to $599,000. Netherlands was up 2% to $1,989,750. Victoria Park was up 2% to $755,000. South Yonder up was also up 2% to $520,000. And Secret Harbour and Queens Rock were up 1.7% to $500,000. $159,500 and $650,000 respectively. Now, Sorrento, Safety Bay, Duncraig and Joondalup also recorded growth over 1%. Now, the number of properties available sale in Perth fell to 5,181 at the end of July, and this was 3.1% lower than June and 39.4% lower than 12 months ago. The Rewa CEO said properties were still selling incredibly quickly, which was keeping the number of listings on Rewa.com low. She does expect listings to increase as we move into spring. However, it will still be some time before we return to a traditional balanced market. Now, it took a median of 10 days to sell a house in July unchanged and still at that record low set in June. Now, according to Rewa.com data, the fastest selling suburbs were Greenfields, Coolangup, and Dayton all at four days, Seville Grove and Wellard were at five days, and the Harrisdale, Armidale, Atwell, Cardinia and Mandra were at six days. All right, turning to Perth's rental market, median rents remain stable in July. Perth's median dwelling rent price was unchanged at 550 bucks a week, reflecting a large number of leases around that price. Now the median weekly rent for houses was 580 bucks a week and $525 a week for units. Now according to Reba.com, the suburbs that saw the most growth in their median rent price were in July were Glendalough up 60% to $690 a week. Shoalwater was up 40% to $560 a week. Applecross up 28% to $693 a week. Bassendine was up 28% to $640 a week, and West Leadable was up 25% to $835 a week. There were 1,876 properties available for rent on Rewa.com at the end of July, which is an 11.8% decrease from June and a 16.4% uh, lower than a year ago. So rental stocks are still very, very low. It took a median of 16 days to lease a rental during July, unchanged from June. And Reba.com data showed the suburbs recording the fastest median leasing times were Hamilton Hill at six days, Canning Vale at eight days, Glendalough, Gosnells and Yocon at nine days, Balgar and Shenton Park at 10 days, and Banksia, Grove, Morley and Nolamara all at 11 days. Well guys, that is all from me today. Now please don't forget to like, comment and share this video and follow or subscribe wherever you're seeing this. Have a great week and remember there's only one thing in life that makes a difference and that is action. Thanks a lot, bye for now.